Well, thank you for the introduction. My name is Kelly. I'm a data scientist at B23. Uh, we're based out of Washington, DC. And like she said, I'm also the co-organizer of the DC Our Ladies Meetup, which is really awesome. So if you're ever in DC, please hit me up, because we're always looking for cool people to give us talks. I'd like to give a talk today about running R in the cloud and a little bit about how we do data science at B23. So very quickly, B23 is a professional services company. We do data science, and we also get to see how other people are doing data science. And sometimes we get to help them do data science more efficiently, usually by giving them access to the tools they need, or the data they want, or both of those things. So there's a lot of really great information on the internet about running R in the cloud. And just to start us off, I wanted to create a quick visualization of one of those blogs uh, written by Amazon Web Services. So they have a tutorial, and I created like a 30-second visualization. We can step through real fast, just so that we're all kind of on the same page to start. So the first thing they'll have you do is uh, select an Amazon machine image. And they suggest starting out with this Linux box, which is a great place to start. And then you have to make a second choice. And this one's a little bit trickier, because they want you to select the type of instance you want to use. And that kind of means anticipating the size of your data and the processing memory requirements that you're going to need for R. And um, luckily, they have this table, which I think is really great. And they suggest starting out with this thing called a T2 medium. And it's great for daily development. And I think I would agree with that. So once you have your T2 medium selected, you then have to configure some things. You could just install R Basic on the box, but you're probably here for the good stuff. So add R Studio server and Shiny server, create a user group, and then configure some other things like uh, IAM roles for AWS credential management. And after that, you're ready for data. So they suggest taking data from an AWS public S3 bucket. Now, S3 means something different in AWS than it does in R. It is Amazon's simple storage service. So they say, take this public data, pull it into your instance. Final step is opening the ports to your instance up to the public internet so that people can get in and use your tool. So that's it. You're done. You have R running in the cloud, which is awesome. So if you make it this far in the tutorial, hopefully your next step after this will be to actually use it for something. And when you're using it, uh, hopefully you will then start to discover what your actual process, what your reality in running R in the cloud actually is. To illustrate this, uh, I'd like to share what ours is. So we kind of have it broken out into three major categories. Number one is our security concerns. Like, we can't open up our tools to the whole internet because we don't want people getting in there and seeing our proprietary algorithms or the data we're using. So we need to maintain those certain standards of security when working in the cloud. And that kind of dovetails into data access. Like, we need more than just public data. We need access to our private data sources in S3. And we want to access more than just data sources in S3. There's other data we're interested in. And finally, we have uh, usability concerns. So we'd like the ability to be more flexible in launching larger and smaller instances in the cloud. We'd like to be able to stand up and shut those instances down so that AWS isn't charging us a, a large bill for when we're not using the instances. And we want to be able to, as a team, collaborate when we're working in the cloud together. Unfortunately, this is kind of where the fount of blog information on the internet starts to dry up when you're trying to solve these questions. So today I want to talk about the second and the third set of concerns, uh, mostly because that's kind of where the interesting R story is, but also it's where I've done the most work on my team as a data scientist. I do want to not move on before acknowledging, though, that like, security is a huge barrier to moving your data science team into the cloud. So if you are interested in hearing more about how we've done that at B23, I've brought my two boss colleagues with me. Uh, Dave and Mark will be back at our booth, so please hit them up on the coffee break if you're interested in that stuff. So moving on, assuming you can reach this acceptable security state in the cloud, if you're moving into the cloud, it's probably for data access. I mean, that's why we made the decision to go there. And we have these two original issues that we outlined, but we also wanted to kind of explore another question, which was, how easy can we make data ingest into the cloud? How easy can we make getting data in the cloud into these tools in the cloud? 
So can we treat data ingest the same way as we treat these ephemeral instances? Can we make it happen on demand? And can we make it so easy that even a data scientist can do it? And the answer ended up being yes. It took a little bit of engineering magic, but we created this templatized process for setting up ingest pipelines into our tools. So now I, as a data scientist, can choose the data source that I want, be that an S3 bucket or an API data source or a Redshift cluster, and then configure some data source settings, choose the destination for that data. Usually for me, that's our server or Sparkly R. And then I can access the data, the data I need. I can craft exactly the experiments that I want. And I can do it all without relying on anyone else on the team. So our final priority is kind of a big one. And we have these three broad concerns that I outlined earlier around flexibility and in instance sizes, cost savings for shutting things down at night, standing back up, and then the collaboration one. But when working with R in the cloud, I quickly discovered that there are a whole slew of very R-specific usability concerns that you run into very fast. And the main takeaway of this slide is that working with R server and Shiny server in the cloud is going to be very different than working with R Studio on your local laptop in that sort of environment. So the pros are, of course, like you get access to all of your cloud data, which is awesome. And you also have this RStudio IDE, which you know and love and you're comfortable with. Unfortunately, there are kind of some functionality cons, too. So imagine if you came into work every day and somebody gave you like a, a brand new, fresh laptop every single day. Like, that would be, on one hand, very cool, maybe. <laughs> on the other hand, you would need to then spend the first hour or two hours of your workday setting up R, setting up R Studio, getting all of your favorite packages installed, and then getting all of your scripts and the projects you were working on yesterday back in so that you can start working. So this daily project management is very tedious, and that's kind of what happens to you in the cloud. If you shut your stuff down in the night, then you start up a brand new fresh instance, everything is gone. So what do you do about that? Another thing is that you have the concept of two different servers. So you have uh, your RStudio IDE, your server over here, and then a Shiny server. And these two things don't naturally talk to themselves. They don't share uh, an easy to navigate file system. So doing Shiny development like you would in your local environment is very different. And it's kind of, I hate to say it, but very painful. Um, finally, some things just won't work right, like either because of your security model or because of that divide between the two servers. Things like RStudio add-ins may not work right, and those may or may not affect your day-to-day -day development practices, but they're good to know about ahead of time. So how can we fix this? Maybe we need a change of mindset to start out with. So Maybe getting a new instance every day isn't a burden. Maybe it's an opportunity for you to write the recipe for your perfect R tool. You have some basic things that I have in the circle around, uh, like R, the servers, create a user account. But after that, you're kind of free to customize these instances however you want. So I thought it would be really cool if every single instance we launched came with a custom Shiny app that I built to bridge the gap between these two servers. So uh, a Shiny app, in a sense, to deploy Shiny apps, <laughs> which was awesome. And it solved my problem really well. And it was hilariously meta. But um, <laughs> I, unfortunately, I realized this was going to be a really heavy-handed approach, especially if I took this approach every time I need to solve a workflow issue. And my boss, Mark, back there, he refuses to open more than three tabs on his browser at any given time. So like, this was not going to be scalable. Um, luckily, and I'm sure many of you realized, and I was a little bit slow to realize this, that R provides this much more elegant solution to the problem, which is just creating a custom R package for whatever functions you need. So that's what we did. We call it B23R. And um, if you were paying attention earlier to the talk, uh, you might have noticed we're in good company here. Um, 
our goal with B23R is very similar, I think, to uh, Airbnb. But we're hoping that uh, other people outside of just our internal team will be able to use it eventually. So here are our B23R helpers for Shiny development, kind of a visualization. In the end, they're very simple functions, but they solve this huge problem, and they make testing and iterating through Shiny development so much easier. Our solution for daily project management is in this graphic, and it got a little bit complicated and out of hand, but I really like this graphic, so I put it in there anyway. I apologize if you need more time with it than I can provide, but essentially what we decided to do was uh, embrace the Packrat R Studio project solution. By that I mean um, use projects for everything and attach Packrat to every project. So when we do that, we can take this uh, whole system, all of the packages that you want to use for this project, the project itself, the scripts, and we can use a function to connect your stack, your R server stack, to an S3 bucket of your choosing. And you can save out these whole projects and then have them get sucked back in into your new stacks the next day or whenever you launch a new stack and have them readily available. You still have to like restore these projects and watch all of your packages install again, but at least the process is automated. I have another one uh, described here too, which was uh, a time saver for me personally because I found that as I was creating new projects, I was spending a lot of time installing those same packages over and over again. So I decided that you could do something similar by uh, saving out a package template file into S3 and then using it to uh, initialize brand new projects. So that's been saving me a lot of time. It's pretty cool. Uh, finally, we have some helpers for our hybrid stacks. Uh, because we can kind of create our custom perfect tool, uh, we've created this sparkly R stack, which comes with a sparkly R package. It's our Studio server running on Spark. And um, in this scenario, we have our easy ingest data pipeline going into HDFS instead of our Studio server. And um, we needed a function so that we could stay in our Studio server and still see inside HDFS. So that's been helpful. Now, I spent a lot of time talking about R specifically because this is an R conference, but we actually use quite a few different data science tools at B23. And I wanted to illustrate on this slide how everything kind of fits together and what a typical day for us looks like. So I have visual representation of our secure virtual private cloud and some of our data sources here. Um, my boss, Dave, usually is first one in the office in the morning on this particular typical day. He is uh, using Apache Zeppelin to run a, re a webinar to do some Redshift training. So he has the Redshift interpreter enabled. And he'll hook it up to our Redshift cluster. My colleague, Courtney, comes in next. She is a machine learning expert. She, today, she's doing some analysis of uh, financial data sets. So she has a Jupyter notebook with a Python interpreter. And she's hooked it up to an H2O cluster to use those algorithms as well. And for that, she's using AWS S3 data. I come in next, I launch our studio server, and I have the plumber package enabled so that I can create a microservice and expose some of the algorithms that I've written so that my colleague Andrew, running an Apache Spark cluster, can send API calls to my server and validate some of the analysis that he's done. Finally, later in the day, Brad will come in and he wants to do a client demo. So he launches a copy of the notebook that Courtney's been working on all day and hooks that up to the same data source and to the same H2O cluster that she's using. So I want to end by uh, talking really quick about how I think working in the cloud has made me a better data scientist. And hopefully some of you, will, if you haven't tried it already, go out and try it because I think it's really awesome. You know, one of the first things I did when I started at B23 was install R Studio and R on my laptop in my local environment because that was what I was used to. And it took me a very long time to leave that safety net and, and go with them up into the cloud. So there are some standard perks you get, like bigger instance sizes for bigger data, running analysis on your, your laptop when you're asleep with it closed. And those things are awesome. But there are also some things that people don't generally talk about, like 
um, having multiple computers at your disposal run through my laptop, running multiple R servers at the same time, and using R server as a microservice for other data tools. And then finally, the idea that these instances themselves are disposable and renewable resources, essentially. You have to pay for them, but if I want to come in one day and oh, launch our server, Shiny server, and then hack one apart to install Node.js on Shiny server so that I can have semantic UI make one of my Shiny apps look prettier, like I can do that. I, I would never risk doing that to my laptop because I'm not a computer scientist, I'm a data scientist, but having these disposable instances gives me, um, makes me a braver data scientist, it makes me uh, able to use my tools in a more powerful manner. So if you are interested in any of the things that I talked out about today, uh, please check us out. We have a booth back there. And uh, the whole platform system, including B23R, is available for public use at no extra cost, the site. Um, so we'd love to hear your feedback. Thank you. <laughs>